So now let's tell you what we think. First thing is that we think that it's very important as a society to be reflective. And for somebody who has achieved almost everything, to put himself in a very polarized political space in this way, he ought to be commended. Now, I play in a, a category of statesmen in Ghana who, although have worked for the nation, have not really offered themselves as, as politicians per se. So, for example, you have Sir Sam Jonah as one. Somebody like Mr. Kwame Pionim is another. So, they serve Ghana in various platforms, but I've never really run for public office. Kwame Pionim's case is a bit different because had it not been for that court case, he may have been the MPP flag bearer for the 96 election, but that's a different issue. Then you have somebody like Tobi Apede as well. Now, because of our very polarized political environment, when people like this speak, you see a lot of people attacking them. Now, we don't think it's very healthy for the country's development. We think that nations like Ghana have to thrive on ideas. And when statesmen and business people or whoever put out points, we have to debate them rigorously. We have to take them on. We have to ask them questions. But that type of debate should not be insulting or filled with rancor. We don't think it's very good. Because what that does is that you keep away all voices. So some of the reaction, which we are not really going to uh, escalate here, is not necessary. There's no point in insulting Sir Sam Jonah, even if you disagree with his business practices. Because you can evaluate what a person says based on his own merit, even if you disagree with the person or disagree with his past conduct. So we think that we should take the points he makes on their own. That's very key. So he's speaking about the economy. He's speaking about debt situation. Now he pointed out facts. Debt to GDP ratio. We are borrowing 30, 40 years. Does borrowing for longer tenors necessarily build well for our future? Now, some of the debt we are incurring now, who is going to pay? Okay, so yes, the bond may be oversubscribed, but does not necessarily mean it's good for the future. So I think we should have an economic debate on the debt issue. Again, he quotes people like Confidence on our competitiveness. You may disagree. We can find a way of debating that. But we think that the way of insults and essentially threats and those type of things are not really necessary. That's not the way to go. Because it's ideas that develop a nation. That's number one. Number two, we think that for what is achieved, he didn't really have to speak. I mean, some people think, Yes, we can, we can even place people like him and the names I mentioned, the category of those who have brought us where we are, because he's been part of the story. Yeah, but he decides to speak, knowing that we're in a very polarized political environment. And we think that's exemplary. And so we think there should be articles written, yes, editorials conducted, contrary views expressed. You can even hold a press conference, interviews done, but it should be based on facts, expressed, and of course, if opinion informed. We think that's very healthy because the, the country is in a difficult place. We've been independent for 64 years. This is the first time somebody like that is holding a mirror to us and saying, look at yourself. You're 64 years old. Look at your economy. Look at your water bodies. He makes a point about foreigners controlling our economy. That's the truth. We know this. We've said this many times. And it's not just Chinese alone. Now we are saying cocoa. Very soon, EU says they may not even buy a cocoa because of Galamsey. Yet we are bringing people in to destroy our forests. Those are critical points that have to be made. Polarized politics. People feeling they don't want to speak out. Now, an, an, a nation or a life that is not examined is not worth living. So every, of, every so often we get a mirror placed in front of us. Now, when a mirror is placed in front of you, you don't shout at the mirror and say, please, I don't like the way my face is shaped. The purpose of a mirror is to help you bring correction. A mirror is not to give you flattery or tell you that I'm good looking. It's like putting a, a spirit level on a concrete. When the bubble is not in the middle, you don't shout at the spirit level. You're a bad spirit level, no. It's to help you implement change in your life. So when somebody places a mirror in front of you and says, Ghana, you are not as competitive as you think you are. You've been voting since 92, eight elections. Inequality is increasing. Your economy is not in your hands. Corruption is pervasive. He says the Lands Commission is the most corrupt square mile. Investors won't bring their money. I mean, don't we know this? I think we should look at it and say, so what can we do? 
Okay, it speaks about some of the issues that happened in the election. The military entering the chamber of parliament when there was no government. That's serious. These are serious points that somebody like him ought to raise. And I think the way we've politicized issues is endangering us. I think one of the big dangers is politicization. Truth must be truth irrespective of who speaks it. Now, if we hold that mirror, which aspects of what he has said are lies? I think we should ask that question. On the economy, think about it. On governance, now, hasn't CDD and IBEG and Toko told us about the excessive powers of the executive, that the judiciary and legislature, our parliament is almost like a rubber stamp. Don't we know this? I mean, do you know? <laughs> this, this are, but the articulation and the contextualization is key. Okay, and I think the premise of his speech is very important. The fact that he says, look, if I don't speak, I will regret it. And we actually urge more people like him to come out and be clear on the issues. Okay, if one person speaks and everybody keeps quiet, it's like, oh, he's because he has, they've taken his business or, you know, we are younger and we have a bigger stake in the future. And a lot of us don't seem to care about the future. A lot of the people in their 70s, I don't think they'll be here in 50 years' time. How many people do you know who are older than 120? But those of us below 50, this is actually, we should be more interested. And I want to urge those on social media not to be facetious and flippant. You have kids. What school are they going to go to? What water will they drink? We did a report on TV on Saturday. Women in Bibiani say they don't have water to drink. They have to buy pure water. Because somebody wants money and is doing what I'm saying. And somebody is bringing foreigners to destroy the water body. If somebody says this, I think we should be more serious about our country and look at what areas we have to change. By all means, let's debate it. But the insults are not necessary. And let's not make partisanship the standard for anything. For once, forget about which party you belong to. And I know a lot of people say, ah, Charlie, we are in DC. When he said he's bashing the government, so let's support it. That's not the way to go. It's more about whether what he says is the truth. So for me, I think we should just go into self-reflection, serious, sober reflection on the future of this country for the next 64 years. If we continue going the way we are going, he seems to be saying that you've done 64 years of independence. If we continue on this path, you will have an economy, you will be in debt, your country will not be in your hands, you will have water to drink, your society will be destroyed, your TV has crazy images, your kids will be destroyed. You're essentially going to go back to the Stone Age. That's what he's telling you. I think we should think deeply about this. Let's pause and think, which is why we dedicated an hour to this. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch on YouTube the aspects of the video we've, we've, we've played. This is time to, for reflection as a society. We have a lot of challenges. We are not as competitive as we think. Being first independent Sub-Saharan Africa is great. But that's not going to bring jobs to your people. Having the most eloquent Kwame Nkrumah as your founding father will not make you competitive. Cote d'Ivoire has beat you to cocoa for the past 40 years. So that's the issue. It's not about historical accolades. It's about competing for the future. We're producing hundreds of thousands of young people into our job market. They are not well trained. There are no jobs for them. Everybody wants to enter politics. We need to stop that. This is a serious issue. And this is what he's telling us. Now, don't hide under a political party and insult him or people older than you who are speaking out. Because... They, are, they will live on the law of averages. They will die before you and I. We are younger. Now, <laughs> they may be dead and gone, and we will deal with the social ills. Look at what's happening in Kasua. Yesterday, chiefs called the police and said the crime is too much. Many parts of our society, you can't even drive at night. Look at the road accidents. More people were killed on our roads than by COVID. COVID has been with us for a year. In three months, we had 771 people die. Part of the lawlessness. This is very serious. A society that cannot look at itself and change and always has to make something politics and insult, that society cannot progress. We are supposed to be the bastion of democracy. A democracy also includes a contest of ideas held in a healthy way, not necessarily insulting and also not just flippant social media commentary. So please, let's not make this one of the jokes and let's stop making memes about this. We have to be serious about Ghana. And if you don't understand the issues, you don't have to tweet. It's not by force to say something on social media because everybody is talking. 
you owe it to yourself to fight for the future of this country. And the best way to do that is to inform yourself, especially as a young people, not only the young people, because a lot of them seem to be disinterested in what's happening in the country. That's not the way to go. Send us a comment, like the video you're seeing, share with your friend. Let's hear from you about Sam Jonas' speech and other speeches that we hope senior statesmen like him, who have decided that they would rather just enjoy their retirement, should come out, speak out, be part of national discourse, because this is where we are from. So we want to urge those other people who have ideas to express but are afraid of the backlash not to be afraid. Because we have only one country, and this is the only way we can build it. It's a contest of ideas and also contesting those ideas in a positive way. We hope you've learned something. Thank you so much for your time with the point of view. Don't forget the show was brought to you by the First National Bank. How can we help you? My name is Bernard Avila. Tonight has been highlights of Sir Sam Jonas' speech, reactions by some key people, and our own few minutes take on this important speech. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Point of View is sponsored by First National Bank. First National Bank. How can we help you?